Hey, welcome back. As promised, we're back with our turbo, our cutaway. We're going to walk through some of the technology and the best guy you could have to help. This is Clint from ATS Diesel. So we've got our cutaway here. We're going to walk you through, you know, some of the ins and outs, which is exactly what a turbo does is it has stuff going in all directions. This happens to be the 3000 turbo, which is really our most popular one, but it's easy to understand. Everything in the red here is really the driven section of the turbo. That's where the exhaust gas energy comes up those Y pipes, drives into the turbine section. The turbine section, you can see how this one's smaller than this one. The scroll wraps around, it diverts air directly or exhaust gas energy directly into the turbine wheel. And as you drive air into that turbine wheel, it spins the compressor wheel. It's mechanically attached and this compressor wheel spins, which is the purple section, and it drives air into the engine. Right, so we've got you know, hot gas and you can see the section area. Well, as we get smaller and smaller, the velocity is getting higher and higher, and that's what's putting energy into that turbine wheel. Well, this is where all the energy is to drive the compressor side, like you said. I mean, it's a mechanical linkage, so it's important to size this correctly. So if you think about a boat prop, you know, you put the wrong prop on there, you might cavitate. You'll never get out of the hole, right? you that's... know, but you might have a top speed that's great, or you can go the other way around. You got right. a prop that really, do you know, digs in hard, but you might go half the speed. So this is setting up your potential energy on what you can do to drive this, right? So that's correct. Once this is set, now your energy is correct. Now you can start pushing on the other side and compressing that air. And when you design a turbo, you want to really start with the turbine section, make sure that turbine section is big enough to support the mass airflow of that motor. And once you get that determined, then you can hang a compressor wheel and a turbine wheel big enough so it doesn't get into that surge. Right. Now talk about, you know, the prop analogy is fantastic. Anybody that's ever driven a boat and hits some choppy water or whatever, you hear that thing really rev. That's something that the 7.3 in general has a real problem with. And that's why we corrected that by adding this inducer bleed here. If you look at the factory compressor, you see this little inducer like we talked about and compared to this four inch. Right. Well, what we've added. Big that is, but you've got extra passages and things that are going on. Right, so if you look at this, this inducer right here, it allows this wheel to act about 20% bigger than it is. Right. So when you start out, the air starts in the smaller section and then the wheel speeds up and you see these veins that are actually different sizes. These veins, the air actually starts to go into the inducer and it makes that wheel much bigger. And again, with the 7.3, when they surge a lot, you'll hear it with higher altitude or if you ever put a chip into it, then the 7.3, you'll be driving and it starts to make this sound. And that's the turbo essentially trying to blow up. And that is probably the number one failure on the 7.3 turbo. Yeah, you're, you really are essentially cavitating. So your blade cavitates and then it catches and it builds boost and then it cavitates again. And so it's going back and forth. So that's why that match is so important. Well, you talked about getting a lot more airflow for the same size wheel. There's mass in here. Now you're spinning this up to 150, 000. We'll spin it to 140 to 160,000 RPM. 160,000 RPM that guy's spinning. So you can imagine anything in mass here to try to get it to spool up, it's gonna take time. So if I can have a smaller wheel and get more airflow through it, all the better for that spool up time. And you right. can see this one here, it's about similar looking size, but this is a nine blade, now I've got a 14 blade. Yep, and you also have the staggered vein design. So your, so your tall vein and your, and your smaller vein one drops the mass, but it allows that turbo to act, or the compressor wheel to act bigger. Right. So it does exactly that. It, it decreases spool up time. So from a stop sign, you accelerate that turbo, gets up to speed quicker. And then the overall design of it gives you more mid-range and much less back pressure on the high side. So that means that you're gonna have lower EGTs when you're pulling your trailer. Yeah, you can just look at the blade. I mean, this is a huge advancement in aerodynamics into the wheel design. It's giving you a whole lot more turbo for a whole lot less, right? You don't need something this big that really loses out all the bottom end. You get everything. Yeah, and you said it right. You know, the, the big thing we have to deal with here or that we get the benefit from today is technology. You know, we're talking about 10, 20 years of technology on an older truck, just the leap, and everybody gets to kind of experience that whole thing because the technology is here today and everybody's keeping their trucks. Yeah, that makes it a whole lot more fun. So. <laughs>